Hello everyone, would you like to have a solution for fishing in places like this? Or maybe like this? Or something similar? Well, in this video I'm going to show you one of the flies that can solve problems like that. In recent video I already did something similar, but let's get into this fly. Uh, specifically, I'm going to show you how to do the furled body, uh, wrap hackle, soft hackle how you can like make it easier for you and more predictable in result and then I'll explain how to do a loop dubbing loop for the body and why I don't want to rip this lie as you can see there is no wire ribbing uh, also there is one reason uh, why I'm going to use red for the let's call it hotspot uh, now let's get into materials and then slowly into tying so hook in this case is the G1720 in size 12 uh, I like it because of overall length so I have enough room to place a uh, case uh, of this fly and also extended uh, well peeping body uh, the hackle I'm using is Brahmahan and it's very nice speckled if you don't have this use partridge or whatever you have soft hackled with those like mar marble like uh, markings for this peeping extended body I will use G strong uh, flu yellow although I think it's more green like if you ask me than yellow uh, but it's just the thread that I have uh, by hand that I can use to make this body I will use Sharpie to color the top of this head so it looks like uh, head of the fly but you can use perhaps maybe some black UV just make a drop of it then for the main thread tying thread I'm going to use Semperfly Nano Silk in red and the reason why I'm using red is because apparently according to some research uh, deep red is something that trout sees as very vibrant as opposed to what we see as very vibrant so I'm trying to test this theory or whatever this research to see if this hotspot is going to make any difference or not so I'll do this on a couple of my flies in future and just test it in uh, hopefully recent trip that I will have for, for some trout fishing uh, another reason why I'm using Semperfly uh, Nano Silk specifically so GSP thread you can use whatever brand you like is because it will make very strong loop and when you make a dubbing loop and when the dubbing is around the thread dubbing actually protects the thread itself so you don't need wire and when you bounce on the bottom and this fly will certainly bounce on the bottom uh, it will actually cushion the, the hits the impact and it will not cut the thread as it would wire trust me it happened to me a couple of times and then this part here that is exposed is important to cover in some super glue because that will protect your fly from uh, unraveling after some time so let's just get into tying it's a very simple very straightforward fly and I made it a little bit uh, simpler because I made this video recently how to use the AVI beads I'll just skip this part so if you want you can just go through my list and uh, see the video with the AVI beads and I'll link it somewhere around the screen here or here so I will start with already prepared tungsten in my wise because I already covered it in one of my videos so I don't want to waste your time but basically you need a thread base some super glue and just attach it to the hook uh, usually what I do is I, I use shorter hook and this taper would just continue down here and the hook band would be around here this time I'm making this longer uh, I'm using this longer hook uh, because I need it for the longer fly obviously so I'll start with waxing thread on the beeswax although it's not necessary this time because thread over here makes friction with thread that I'm using for tying and to tighten my waist and it's okay but if you start on a bare hook it's definitely a useful thing to do okay 
Now, first things first. I'll use this thread to make tag. And I'll use around 30 centimeters or 35 centimeters of it. And I'll fold it a couple of times onto itself until I, I reach uh, eight strands. So now I have two. Then I do it again, I have four. I do it again, I have eight. So you need to fold it three times to get eight. Is that right? Yes, it's right. So now that I got it, I'll just catch everything around here. What what's what my goal is over here is simple. I'd like to kind of taper down like this the whole fly. So I want to make this thicker, much thicker, but not level with this thickness over here. Just kind of level it down. Uh, I don't want to have perfect cylinder here because it would be just a waste of time and uh, I don't think it's too necessary to resemble fly that close, at least not case this. So catching this here and kind of uh, eliminating a little bit of this abrupt taper with flat thread I'm leading thread towards the hook band and I'll stop around here and now it's easier for me to turn the vise around I'll just twist this onto itself a couple of times until it when you release the pressure it furls to control where I want the furl I'll use whip finishing tool fold it where I want it let me just show you that fold it like so and release it and it will tighten it will furl now I'll help it a little bit with my hands and then keep the tension now I can release the tension over here tighten it after one or two wraps it's safe what I'm trying to do here uh, is to make this very end relatively flat well it's as flat as possible because that's exactly the place where I want to wrap the hackle wrapping the hackle on on the flat base makes the things easier a lot now it's easier also to make the head so I'll just touch it a couple of times and like the marker makes excellent contrast on this chartreuse thread well I see it as chartreuse maybe it's really yellow as they state on the, on the package they say fluo yellow for me it's chartreuse but yeah uh, now I have this Brahma hand hackle which I want to fold so how to do that uh, I'll take it by the tip if you want to see the proper way really good way uh, and to learn something new I would highly suggest going to Wayne Lou Allen's video folding feather uh, folding feathers because it's it's just amazing anyway now this is I, I've learned from that video but it's still far from the good uh, I want my sh the shiny side of the feather, so this side, to face me. So when I start wrapping, these barbs are going to hit the hook first. So I want to move them out of the way. So a lot, put the thumb on the rachis here and push those barbs away. So push them. So you put your thumb in order not to rotate the rachis and then just kind of pull it and this is the effect you want you want to make this kind of folded feather as you can see it here it's not folded perfectly yet but you want to put all those barbs on one side this is more like it some feathers fold better than others now I'll cut this and leave just a tag to tie in the hackle here 
Okay. Now with hackle pliers, I'll grab the thick part of the rakes, and here is the thin part. It's a little bit tricky to do this, simply because you have a hook point in your way, so it's not easy to wrap the hackle like so. Sorry for my fingers being in your way. And as I was saying, I didn't fold it well, so I have some barbs fighting me. Some things I can do, some things I'm not so good. Soft hackle is not my strength, so I'll fold it as I wrap it. For some reason, this Brahma is more tricky than than partridge for example i don't know why okay i'll grab it with two wraps and now i can just break it off this is three wraps actually but keep tension on your tying thread because if you don't you will uh, lose the feather, it will unravel. When you break it, it can unravel. So I'll just move those barbs away from the tying in point, or away from everything here. And again, to eliminate eliminate this taper here, I will use this thread, waist thread, to my advantage. So I'll just You can use pull up to pull down technique over here. So softly wrap, softly wrap, and just go pulling upwards. Oops, this was not so soft. Again, soft up, soft up, until you reach the point where you want to cut the thread. And as you can see, it's creating this taper. I don't want to cut it super close because I want to cover it with thread again. Again, for the purpose of the taper. Okay. I'll go back. This is it. This is all I want. Now, I want to make extremely well, not extremely, but relatively long dubbing, dubbing loop because you will need two dubbing loops at this point halfway and another half so around 20 centimeters of dubbing loop and to grab those legs together, to put them together you need to t twist your bobbin holder around those legs twice and then just lead it towards the heckle and then go away with your thread. Okay. Dubbing twister is heavy, and that's very important for me. I love heavy dubbing twisters. I'll place those dubbing twister legs into the loop, so they this keep it, it keeps it open. But as soon as you put your fingers like so against the thread, you can control whether you want your loop to be open or closed and that's very important to know for the dubbing I'll be using my mixture of C of uh, hair's mask uh, mixed with some ice dub uh, you want a relatively thick dubbing noodle this time because there is a lot of space here to eliminate to, to kind of level up but again you don't want to make too tight dubbing noodle, or, uh, too tight and too thin, or too thick again. If you make it too thick, it will be soft, and materials will actually fall out of it, regardless of how strong you twist the thread. So you go with relatively thick, but still, noodle that you can brush out if necessary. I'm dubbing this thread 
and making the noodle. You can use wax if you want, but I like this method because I have more control over it. With touch dubbing in this case, I just don't like it. What I like to do is I like to use the hook on the wood finish tool to grab those two legs together and keep materials together and then spin the twister and just go back and forth with your wood finishing tool and it will make this whole thread, whole dubbing here, dubbing loop tighten. You can just give it a pull to tighten things even more. And then let's begin building up because this is what it really is, building up the fly at this point. So you can overlap at the at start because you need some thickness over here. So I want, as you can see, I'm overlapping here and building this line. And that's why the relatively thin dubbing noodle is useful because I have obviously more control uh, on what I'm doing here. And now next dubbing loop that I'm going to make is going to be thinner so I can just level it up. I'll go back with my thread because I just moved it out of the way. I'm twisting tying thread around the dubbing loop that I made because it makes it more secure. And then repeat the process relatively not long dubbing noodle two times with your tying thread around the legs and then lead your thread towards the front of the fly now as I was saying you need thinner dubbing noodle in my previous video I mentioned that if you have dry hands you need to create more friction so sometimes just touching wax will make this friction happen so if you have dry hands very useful stuff to do but if you do it too much uh, you may get sticky hands and then you just go wash them try to make this dubbing noodle relatively even even though it's not tight because again result will be more predictable and that's what you want I'll show you this noodle I need to thin it up over here a little bit okay just take your time so you can see it, it's out of, it's blurred but still visible so put my dubbing loop twister and then again twist it and then go back and forth with my wood finish tool and as you can see it's relatively oh it's folded here but it's relatively thin so more control and then now instead of overlapping just go in touching turns and cover the rest of the body over here and the reason why I'm not using uh, any metal ribbing, well, wire ribbing, is simple because this uh, dubbing around the thread, which is already very strong, uh, will protect thread from hits and rocks and whatever can happen underneath under the water. But whip finish, I need to to protect with uh, with some super glue because it's exposed and uh, it's like very very kind of sensitive to rocks so I'm just taking it okay I need to go back because I didn't cover this part that's gonna work now obviously I'm not gonna bother and make another loop for a couple of reps over here I'll just dub
but for this I will, I will make relatively thin the vinyl. It's a fly that requires a lot of dubbing, but it's wor worth making. What I would suggest, uh, how to choose a color, and for many people that's one of the most important aspects of the fly, is if the bottom of the river where you're fishing is dark, choose dark dubbing. If the bottom is light, choose light dubbing, because the caddis that you're actually imitating with this are going to do the same, they're going to camouflage themselves and you don't want to have light uh, caddis color, well case cover, uh, in dark bottom. I mean it's going to be more visible but it's not imitative, it's not going to be good imitation of what you're trying to do. Okay, one more whip finish. And then the last step would be to protect everything from rocks. And that's going to be super glue. Now, I love this control, Loctite control. Or honestly, I love uh, in gel, but this is going to work just as fine uh, for this purpose because I just need to squeeze sides of the bottle and it will uh, give me a little bit of super glue and as soon as I stop squeezing it retracts inside like it returns to the excess glue inside which is very good and these bottles they last for kind of forever they never get dry at the top so I really like to use them this is it it's more important to secure it here on the bottom than on the top because the bottom will hit the bottom of the river. So guys, uh, this is the fly for this week. I hope you like it. I hope fish will like it on my uh, trip that will come very soon. And I hope I will have some video for you, uh, fishing video, fishing report. So until next time, Keep safe and tight lines.